we have some breaking news out of Colombia regarding the dam disaster we have been covering for the last week or so. In case anybody doesn't know, there's a large hydroelectric dam project that was almost ready to be completed, but because of mismanagement and corruption and bribes, there were certain safety protocols that weren't adhered to, and there was a collapse, and partial collapse, and it was in danger of flooding a 125 mile area downstream. Um, some of the collapse, the partial collapse, did flood certain areas, destroying hundreds of homes, and they had had to evacuate pretty much the entire downriver area. The government stepped in after the company EPM abandoned the project, saying this is just going to collapse and we can't fix it. They said, no, look, you're going to fix it or there's going to be a problem, and so they had to put thousands of men on this working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to reach this goal height, this 410 meters above sea level height of this dam, so that the, when the water comes up, it can be diverted into yet other discharge areas. Now, they're not completely out of the woods yet, but this definitely decreases the risk. Um, they're going to continue building, I believe, to 430 meters, so they have another 20 meter buffer on top of this. To give you an idea of what the problem was and still exists, it's this. Here is this landslide, the collapse. Underneath here was a tunnel that had been built to divert the Kauka River while they were working on the dam. It wasn't done properly and they rushed through some things and closed other tunnels prematurely. And with the heavy rains, this area, as you can see, caved in and blocked this tunnel that caused massive amounts of water to back up behind the dam prematurely put too much pressure on it but also pressure on this tunnel the blockage and then the blockage let go you know completely in an unpredictable manner and sent torrents of water down the Kalka River and destroyed homes and businesses and schools and churches and all this kind of stuff and so, of course, once the pressure was relieved, then the blockage would fall back in again and stop it, and the process would then begin again. And they never knew when this thing was going to let go. It was a terrible situation, and that's why they wanted to abandon it, but the government wouldn't let them. And so now that they've got the dam built up to the point where they can discharge the water in other areas, they can now address dealing with this collapsed tunnel, which is going to put the dam back. The opening of the dam was supposed to be December of this year. It's not going to open until 2021 now. And that's what trying to cut corners does for you. When you put big projects like this in the hands of corporations whose only desire is the maximum amount of profit possible, this is what you get. So what I wanted to do is try to also show you a picture of the two things side by side. An actual picture and then um, this is actually Bing Aerial, which I'm seeing is much clearer than Google Maps, even the 3D version. So what you're looking at over here is an actual photo, helicopter photo. And you can see the river here being blocked by the dam. And then this turn to the, uh, the right, I guess this would be uh, east. So this would be north. And you see this little cut right here well, over here. You can see this, here's your big right hand turn, and here's that little cut right here. So as you can see them side by side, this little cut right here corresponds to this here. So you can see where the dam would be coming out of the mountains. Now, this is gonna be the issue going forward with this, is that they are going to have to figure out how they are going to be able to seal that tunnel completely so that they can't that it, there won't be this danger of it just letting go again because it's you know it's a diversion tunnel and so they're going to have to find a way to divert water away from this tunnel it's going to be this huge project and this huge problem but for now um, it seems like the immediate danger has abated it's uh, going into summer and hopefully the rainy season won't last too much longer down there um, I know there's been a lot of talk and speculation about weather engineering. I'm not saying that doesn't happen, but this is a rainforest, and this is spring in a rainforest. So, 
you know, more than likely this is just good old Mother Nature. Now, just to uh, show you the article real quick, um, let's see if I can open this up. This is uh, 8 o'clock this morning, just to show you how recent this is, that they have just announced that they have reached the goal height of 410 meters. So, probably can take a little bit of a breath. Um, I'm sorry, they're going to not build it to 430, they're going to build it to 415, so only five more meters to go. Um, so that, I don't think they're worried about the dam itself collapsing now, they just have to deal with that tunnel. Um, 1,600 workers, 24 hours a day to meet this goal. So it was, it's just kind of sad that it had to get to this point that they needed to wait until it was ready to destroy, you know, a fourth of the country before they were forced into actually doing this evil socialist thing by letting the government step in and make the decisions in a not-for-profit way. And that's pretty much the entire thing here it's uh and this other article here which is also was the 21st after this the company has lost so much money now and they're going to have to deal with the, the ongoing problems of flooding that they've canceled this big gas acquisition thing they had going on but at least they're doing the right thing here now to uh, take care of the people and see that if any further damage is done they will uh, be able to take care of them financially. And of course it says here, the crisis will postpone the start of the electricity generation at the site, which was previously slated for December of 2018. When fully operational now in 2021, Twango is expected to supply more than 17% of Columbia's electricity. So, you'll have that, I guess. They are losing money as it stands right now but this is what happens and there's been investigations into the bribery and the um, corruption and this is Colombia so you know not to make this about Venezuela but this is just one example of a lot of corruption that goes on in this country and you can look for yourself Colombia reports um, and all those Latin American side they're already talking about massive fraud in their elections but you don't hear any call to not recognize their president or any call to overthrow that government. So it's just very hypocritical. So, but for now, the people in this region can take a breath and they can relax at least for a minute because they have achieved their goal. So any new news we will definitely keep you updated on. Pray for the U.S. soldiers in Colombia like I asked in the last video. And uh, keep your eyes open, head on a swivel, and we will talk to you soon. Like, share, subscribe.